Sa isang one-on-one -on -one interview sa GMA News, ibinahagi ng dating U.S. Vice President at Environment Activist na si Al Gore ang mga negatibong epekto ng climate change sa mundo, lalo na sa Pilipinas. Kung hindi raw ito masusolusyonan, mahigit labing tatlong milyong mga Pilipino ang kakailanganing ilikas. Pero kapag umaksyon ang gobyerno, hindi lang daw ito makatutulong sa kalikasan, kundi makalilikha pa ng milyon-milyong mga trabaho. Narito ang panayam ni Howie Severino. You did mention that uh, 13 million Filipinos may need to be relocated to higher yeah. ground eventually. And maybe more. Uh, mm -hmm. Many more than that in the U.S. will have to be relocated also. But what kind of urgent strategy should our government, uh, especially our next president, adopt to enable the country, our country, to avoid this kind of scenario? Well, there are two uh, sets of policies. W one is adaptation. How do you put in place uh, sensible plans to, to, to manage what is unavoidable. But the second is, how do we avoid what is unmanageable? How do we prevent and mitigate uh, the damage that would be done if we did nothing? And that is why the Paris Agreement is so important. Uh, and, you know, we have politicians in the U.S. saying, Oh, the percentage by which the U.S. contributes to this is so small compared to the rest of the world. Why should we do anything? And I hear some politicians in the Philippines saying, Oh, our contribution is so small. Why should we do anything? Well, the answer to both groups is the same. Of course, the U.S. contribution is much larger. Uh, but in both countries, the answer is every nation has to be a part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And every nation will benefit when we address the climate crisis together. And as we do so, people will benefit not only in avoiding all this damage, but in the creation of millions of new jobs, retrofitting buildings, installing the solar panels and windmills, retrofitting efficiency improvements, uh, turning to sustainable forestry and agriculture. This is the biggest business opportunity in the history of the world. Because both industry and policymakers have been saying, well, the problem is the coal is still much more affordable than a lot of the Yeah, but renewals. it's really not anymore. That, that, that perception, certainly you do hear that a lot. Yes, they do say that. But it's now out of date. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it, it used to be said that these new mobile phones will only be able to sell a few hundred thousand of them. Well, they're selling billions of them. And the same thing is true. Uh, for the cost effectiveness of renewable energy. But I do strongly support policies, first of all, that reduce the burden on taxpayers who are subsidizing coal now and subsidizing uh, diesel and kerosene and gasoline now. Uh, the subsidies for fossil fuels are 40 times larger than the subsidies for renewable energy. So that's the first step that needs to be taken. Stop forcing the taxpayers to subsidize the coal plants. Uh, secondly, yes, I support a tax on coal and give the money back to the people. But it needs to come faster so that we don't drive the fish populations away from the Philippines, so that we don't uh, force uh, millions of people to relocate from the coast so that we don't see the rising seas destroy the drinking water supplies along many coastal areas so that we don't see more uh, diseases uh, spread in a, in a hotter, wetter world. Should the fossil fuel uh, industry, uh, the oil companies, the coal companies, should they, they be compensating, uh, especially the most vulnerable, the most affected uh, countries? Right now, uh, there are investigations underway in the U.S. to determine whether or not some of these companies have committed fraud in falsely uh, persuading people that the climate crisis is not real. Uh, and many are comparing what they've done to what the tobacco companies mm -hmm. did for so long. Well, uh, the Philippines is often portrayed as a victim of climate change. I'm wondering, uh, after several days in the Philippines, uh, do you see a greater role for the, for the country? The biggest impression that Tacloban made on me was the resilience and the, the uplifting spirit of the mm -hmm. people, uh, the renewal, the determination to move forward. And that same spirit has been displayed to the world in the leadership the Philippines has provided, which I saw most recently in Paris mm -hmm. in December, 
uh, where uh, at the Climate Vulnerable Forum and in the Friends of the Future group, the Philippines did more than any other nation mm -hmm. to put the more ambitious goal of 1.5 degrees into the agreement, to put the long-term goal into the agreement, which is really the key to success. So uh, when I say the, the world has recognized the moral authority of the Philippines, not just because of what the Philippines uh, has endured, but because of the advocacy and the, the leadership that the Philippines has provided.